could Mary or Judas have said no to Jesus' plan? What's up, Truth is Abandoned? I just want to talk about Mary and Judas. And the reason is because in my uh, Elena L video, I had somebody comment and they said, well, actually, they commented on my question. And I asked Elena L and provisionists in general, and maybe even open theists, and I, I know how they would respond, if Mary could have said no. And then somebody said, well, could Mary and Judas have said no? And I said, well, that's interesting. Well, we could put both of them in there. So that is the question. Could Mary have said no to God's plan for salvation for Jesus Christ? to be born from her. And I've had a lot of people say, well, yes, of course, which is very interesting because in the provisionist camp and even in the open theist camp, right, God has to work around the autonomous or libertarian free will, however you want to parse that out, the free will of man. So people say that God can actually fail in his plan for the salvation of men. And I don't know if people have actually thought this through because obviously within the provisionist uh, camp, and obviously that's a, a, a large camp on, you know, how far left or right you want to look at that, right, all the way to the open thesis, they say, well, of course, because God doesn't know the future because the future is open, right? His foreknowledge isn't true foreknowledge in the, in the idea that he actually knows the future and he sovereignly decrees the future and he can work in the future as plan, and we're all with, restrained, confined within his plan uh, of, of his decree for the future, right? Open theists would say, no, 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 he, he doesn't have a decree for the future because he doesn't know it because it's open, right? Hence, open theism. And they will per, some, point to certain passages in scripture and use those, and they will ignore other passages of scripture. This is where the difference between a descriptive passage and a prescriptive passage of scripture comes into play. And I want to talk about this because I think this is important. This is where people are kind of falling short on this issue and moving into what I would call heresy. Is that a descriptive passage is a passage of scripture where the author of scripture is describing what's happening, right? He's describing an interaction. He records a conversation. He he takes down a historic event that happens, and then he describes that in scripture versus a prescriptive section of scripture, which is where I would look at something like Isaiah 40 through 48, which is the trial of the unknown gods, a lot of people call it, where God is prescribing things for humanity. He describes his attributes, right? So this is descriptive and prescriptive. There are parts of scripture where God will say, it is not good for man to be alone, right? And he should take, you know, a wife and marry her, right? That's a prescriptive. That's telling us what's going to happen, what is good. It is God saying, I'm going to do this. I'm prescribing that man has to follow this. Versus where you have a descriptive passage where a conversation perhaps is between God and man. I was just uh, reading through Genesis the other day or listening into it while I was at work. And you have God where he is interacting with Abram, right? Abraham. And, you know, he's about to destroy Sodom. And Abraham is saying, well, God, what if you find 50 men, right? And then he says, well, okay, if I find 50. And he says, well, God, what if you find 45, right? And then he just whittles them all the way down uh, into single digits. And that's a, so that's a descriptive passage where we record an interaction between two men or a man and God, right? Yahweh and Abraham. And so when I ask the question, well, could Mary have said no to Jesus? If you're a Roman Catholic, especially, but if you're a provisionist and you say yes, you're saying that Mary and her free will, her ability to not have to be restricted by God in any way, shape or form means that she could have said no in God's plan that he's been planning to bring his son into the world could have been foiled and thwarted because Mary's free will has to be upheld, right? Isn't that just weird to hear that somebody would say, yes, Mary is so strong and so powerful, and she has such autonomy that she can tell God Almighty, no, I don't want to do this. And then God's plan for the salvation of mankind by bringing his son into the world through this virgin would have fell apart because Mary's free will has to be saved. Well, what if Mary didn't say no, right? Even if, she, okay, well, Mary says, yes, it's okay. Yes, I'm going to go along with this. Well, what about Judas, right? Well, what if, could Judas have said no? Well, according to the provisionists, at least in the question that I asked in the comments, and according to a lot of provisionists, they would say yes, even though scripture is clear that Judas was created for this point, that Pontius Pilate, that Herod, this was all predestined. In the book of Acts, we see this, right? Well, it's weird. Like, if you're a provisionist, you say Judas could have said no. Well, then Jesus would once again have his plan foiled. So he would have come to die for the sins of the world, to bring salvation for all of mankind. But Judas and his autonomous libertarian free will is so free, and it has to be upheld 
that he could say no, and God would have possibly missed dying on the cross for the salvation of mankind. Well, then God has to, what, start over? He has to figure out a new plan. He has to struggle, and in his anxiety, he has to find somebody else that will kill him. Right? So this is just, it's just weird when I, I talk to provisionists, they say, well, of course, they, the, the way they come across is, oh, yeah, we have free will, and it's fine, and, you know, we, we have the ability to say no, and you're like, well, what is superior? Like, what about God's free will? Because they never think about that, and I, I don't see that because they, from the provisionist camp, and I know they wouldn't say it, and they probably don't even think like this, but it seems the logical outworking of your system is that if your free will has to be upheld, that means that God's free will is less important than yours, right? Because if God's free will and his autonomy and libertarian free will, right, his desire for his plan to be put in motion can be thwarted by your free will. So your free will and your autonomy and your human need to make your decisions outside of any constraints of God overpower God. And so God is constantly have to reschedule and refit and redraw his plan out in order to work around you. Now, some people will say, no, 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 God in God in his foreknowledge, he looked down through the, the realm of time and he saw all the decisions that people were going to make. And then he made his plan based on that. Well, it really is irrelevant because then you still have the same problem. Your free will, even if God made his plan around all your free will, still outpowers and outweighs God's free will. So even if he looked down the, the law, you know, the hallway of time and saw what you're going to do versus just interacting with what you're going to do is still plays out the same. Your free will still trumps his free will, his sovereign decree, what he ordains. So I just, I don't understand how provisionists cannot see the issue within their system that God somehow comes in second. He always comes in second because you're somehow, uh, somehow always the one who wins because you're in charge of your life. So this is a very democratic mindset behind this. this is very Western 21st century, 20th century. And uh, when I look back at, at history, most people didn't have this issue because they didn't live in a democratic world. And I think that the problem is that so many people today have been so influenced by Western democracy and thinking and free, you know, the amendments. Oh, I have the First Amendment, the Second Amendment, the Third Amendment. I have these rights. I have this free will. People can't impose on me. That has corrupted their thinking, and then they anachronistically read that back into Scripture. So I'm, I'm curious, if you're a provisionist, how is it that Mary and her ability to say no to God doesn't thwart God's plan? And why does Mary's free will trump God's free will? Right? I don't understand. It's either one or the other. You can't say, oh, well, they just work in tandem. Well, then you start sounding like a compatibilist. Then you start moving into the reform camp. So I'm just curious. Maybe I'll throw it out there. I'd like to hear a provisionist explain this, maybe make a video because I see a lot of, you know, brief comments. Oh, yeah, he could have done this because this is like two sentences. Like, well, that's, that's thorough. That's very helpful. That helps the conversation move forward. So I'm curious what provisionists think about this. And uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Like or dislike this video, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.